Leaders from around the world are in New York City at the United Nations General Assembly, a week of meeting and greeting that was impossible last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. This year, this annual appointment for face-to-face -face diplomacy is a mixture of family reunion and crisis meeting. Tonight, the emphasis is clearly on crisis. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres today issued a wake-up call to the world, offering a blistering indictment of countries failing their own citizens and each other. I'm here to sound the alarm. The world must wake up. We are on the edge of an abyss and moving in the wrong direction. Our world has never been more threatened or more divided. We face the greatest cascade of crises in our lifetimes. The quiet alarm bells are also ringing at fever pitch. The recent report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was a code red for humanity. Now is the time to restore trust. And now is the time to inspire hope. And I do have hope. The problems we have created are problems we can solve. Humanity has shown that we are capable of great things when we work together. And that is the raison d'etre of our United Nations. Yeah, the UN General Assembly adds an opportunity to maintain and build relationships with one very unexpected exception this year. Today, the foreign minister of France said that he has no intention of meeting his U.S. counterpart, the U.S. Secretary of State this week, a cold shoulder from Paris to Washington. France is fuming over a trilateral security pact between the U.S., the U.K., and Australia, saying it was stabbed in the back by allies who kept the deal secret. I want you to listen to what U.S. President Biden said today in his debut address at the U.N. The United States will compete and will compete vigorously and lead with our values and our strength. We'll stand up for our allies and our friends and oppose attempts by stronger countries to dominate weaker ones, whether through changes to territory by force, economic coercion, technical exploitation, or disinformation. <clears throat> but we're not seeking, say it again, we are not seeking a new Cold War or a world divided into rigid blocks. Our international editor, Richard Walker, he is at the U.N. in New York City. Good evening to you, Richard. I want to pick up on what the, the U.S. president said in just a moment, but another world leader is making news just in the last couple of minutes. Tell us what you know. Yeah, that's right, Brent. So a lot of focus on Joe Biden, on the drama of Antonio Guterres' comments, and of course, uh, uh, the strife between the United States and France. But some of the biggest and most consequential news actually coming from China's President Xi Jinping, who in, in his pre-recorded message to the UN General Assembly announced, almost just slipped in there, that China would stop building coal-fired power stations around the world. Now, this is seen as significant because China's Belt and Road, its huge like, international infrastructure initiative, has been a major driver of coal power stations outside China around the world, particularly in developing countries. And we managed to grab uh, the U.S. climate envoy, John Kerry, who's been shuttling between meetings here in New York, to comment on that. And here's what he had to say. Uh, it's an extremely welcome decision. Uh, we've been talking with China for quite some period of time about this, and I'm absolutely delighted to hear that President Xi has made this important decision. It's a great contribution. It's a good beginning to the efforts we need to achieve for Glasgow. Richard, that, we have to say that was an exclusive. You got that comment from John Kerry just in the last hour or so. And this progress that is being announced by the Chinese president and it being announced here by John Kerry, it speaks to the fact that the U.S., it may be serious when it says that it can have a conflict with China on some things, but when it comes to climate change, they are working together. That's right. Now, this has been a very big worry, especially in recent months. You know, there's been a concern about the U.S. and China slipping into a kind of a Cold War confrontation ever since uh, the latter half of the Trump presidency. But this has taken on almost an even greater intensity under Joe Biden. There's been a lot of concern 
but from people like the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres that this uh, this showdown between the US and China is going to get in the way of uh, of working together on some of the most important issues facing mankind. Of course, we heard the urgency of the messages from Guterres in the in the clips just earlier. What we're hearing from John Kerry here and what the signal from Xi Jinping seems to be there is that there is some possibility that that cooperation can still happen. John Kerry saying that he's been talking to China for a long time about this, that this is something that he's been urging them to do, and Xi Jinping going on and doing this. Now, of course, Xi Jinping may have every other reason to do this. Of course, climate change is, doesn't just affect the United States, it doesn't just affect any one country. It's in China's own interest to deal with it, too. But maybe a little glimmer of hope that the two countries uh, can cooperate on this issue, after all, despite the multitude of other issues that they face together. Yeah. Let me uh, pick up, too, Richard, on what the U.S. president, he found himself today with the task of mollifying French anger over that AUKUS security pack. Biden also finds himself having to convince the world that America is back, his America is back mantra is not a kindler, gentler version of Trump's America first. Did he succeed today? Yeah, well, the jury's still out on that, Brent, but it's certainly true that the French are uh, mightily annoyed about what the, the Americans and the Australians are, have done, pulling the plug on a uh, long-established deal between France and Australia and kind of going their own way. And the signal that the French seem to be interpreting this and others on continental Europe, too, is that there's a kind of like, like a two, two classes of U.S. allies, a, a signal that somehow the Anglosphere or, or this Indo-Pacific region are more important to the United States uh, than these very long-standing allies in continental Europe. So the U.S. is going to have to do some homework, I think, to, to patch things up with the Europeans. Now, of course, you know, the alliance, the transatlantic alliance goes back a very long way. It's not something that can be undone by a single decision. But what it will do is contribute to a debate that's been kind of bubbling in Europe, mostly in think tank circles. But I can think we can expect it to expand about whether Europe needs to be more independent, where it, whether it needs to come out a little bit from, from under the United States shadow. This will only contribute to that debate uh, in the months and years ahead. And Richard, the UN Security or Secretary General today, he did not hold back with his criticism of an international community that is heavy on self-centeredness and short on empathy. Have we ever seen Antonio Guterres like this before? Yeah, it was really powerful language, wasn't it? I mean, that one word, I think, is going to stick out for me from today's talks uh, more than any other. Him calling it an obscenity, uh, the inequality uh, between the rich countries and the rest of the world over vaccination. The fact that six billion vaccine doses have been administered worldwide, but only 2% of those have been administered in the continent of, of Africa. And I think, you know, at, at Guterres, I think this is the strongest language from him so far far. But I think you're hearing the exasperation of a man who's been making warnings like this for some time and just feels his message is not getting across. And it's not just on COVID. It's on climate change. It's on global poverty. It's on a whole range of issues. I think you're hearing the frustration here of a man uh, trying to uh, bring the international community together back here in this building in New York and feeling it's not coming together. DW's international editor Richard Walker with excellent analysis and reporting tonight from the UN in New York. Richard, thank you.